I watched the movie only this morning, actually, and oh. I thought it was just absolutely brilliant. It's such a, a great story of such great characters. But I mean, your career is littered with brilliant characters and such brilliant films. I just wondered what what draws you into a, to a project and a character in particular? What was it that drew you into The Last Shift? Um, well, I, you know, I don't... I don't really know uh, uh, specifically. I don't uh, except that if I re I read something, and I think I really love this guy, and I think I could bring something to him, or I read it and say, you know, this is really interesting, but I just don't see myself playing this. I I, I don't know, I don't know what I could offer it, and uh, it's it, that's kind of it. You know, you just you, you I I love, I love the dialogue in the last shift. I grew up in a small town. I, I knew guys like Stanley um, in high school. And I just thought that, that Andrew really captured, and, and it, it's a movie about people you just don't see on film, on, uh, you know, they're, they're overlooked. And so um, um, that's, that's kind of, I, I read it and immediately said yes. Do you think, is, is it not just about people that are overlooked, but do you think it's part, a part of America that we don't see so much? Because this, I remember I travelled around America a couple of years ago, and this is, the, the, the majority of America is places like this, isn't it? We get so used to seeing the kind of bright lights of New York or the Hollywood Hills, but actually this is, this is the kind of bread and butter and, of, and the, the kind of mechanics behind this country working, isn't it? It, it is, you know, and, and they, they lead a very small life you know, a, a, a life of little experience. And, uh, and a guy like Stanley, who's probably hasn't been out of the state in his life, you know, as he says on the airplane, you want, why don't you take a plane? He said, well, I'm not that cuckoo, you know. I, I, so, so yeah, yeah, it, there's, there's a lot more of these folks out there that, that really we just don't hear about or see. Yeah, and I mean, obviously these two characters are from such different walks of life and from different generations, but, you know, they learn, I mean, was particularly Stanley learns so much. I just wonder, I mean, we, we seem to live in a kind of world or society at the moment where there seems to be such an apprehension towards strangers and, 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 and other people. I just, a bit, this really shows on this sort of core relationship in this movie that there's so much to learn from each other, isn't there, if we, if we seek to? Oh, absolutely. And, and that's, I think, the sadness of the movie is that Stanley doesn't have the wherewithal to, to, uh, take advantage of this relationship in, in a positive way. He just doesn't know how. He just doesn't. You know, it's like he's, he, this is the first time he's ever been at a relationship with anyone of color, you know, and he's hung around with the same people, you know, talked about the same things his whole life. He has these, this belief system that Javon really turns upside down and, and especially about his work and his job and the money he gets. I mean, he's clueless to this stuff. So I think for me, that was the sad part of the film um, is that, that he doesn't have the wherewithal to, uh, to really have a relationship with anybody who's different than he is. Yeah. Conversely, did you find yourself sort of learning and, uh, from, from Shane as, as, as a co-star on this project? Yeah, we, we talk, I mean, we, I love Shane. I think Shane is, I mean, he's just wonderful. In this. He's just wonderful. Um, but we, 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 we played a lot. We, 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 when, I don't mean we ad libbed or anything like that, but I mean, we just, we would do things differently because I, I don't like to lock anything in and just let's see where we go with this. Um, and Shane is, was a wonderful partner. He was, uh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a, I mean, he's not a kid. To me, he's a kid, but he's not. I mean, he's he's just a um, really talented, terrific young man. And a question I wanted to ask is because I, I I always want to ask this, but I never have an actual kind of context or purpose to. But what's your favorite sandwich? Because I I'd love to ask people that usually, but <laughs> since you work in a kind of sandwich sort of fast food chain and this, I thought I'm actually in a position to ask. Well, um, I when I grew up in high school, I ate cheeseburgers from McDonald's. I'm Surprised they don't look like one. I kind of do, but I mean that's where it was just the worst diet in the world. That's what I ate: cheeseburgers and fries. And they used to make fries with you know animal fat. They make it with vegetable oil now. I think so. Oh my God, we ate those. Geez. That was my favorite. Um, now, I don't really like eggplant, but my favorite sandwich is an eggplant sandwich <laughs> with cheese. I don't know why. I, I don't. 
a good combo. But I was, do you think that this last year in the world, obviously everything that's gone on with COVID, has really emphasised who the true essential workers are, the, the Stanleys of this world? Because these these are jobs that kind of people, some people would look would not not would look down on, you know, kind of stick their nose up at. But if you look at people that are stacking shelves at supermarkets or people taking out our bins. This last year, if anything, they've actually proven that their careers and their jobs, how we function and tick as a society. Well, my, my first thought when all of this, when the vac- vaccinations are coming and starting now, my first thought was, I wonder if Stanley would have gotten his first, one of the first ones, you know, for the first time in his life, yeah. he's, in the front, he's in the front of the line. Yeah. The first time in his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I read that you used to work at a fast food restaurant when you were at, at school but do you think and this is not me suggesting in any way shape or form that you would be like a diva or anything but is it very, is it easy as an actor with award ceremonies with red carpets with movie sets to, to kind of lose touch with that reality that you you once know when you've been doing this job for a number of years because I've been on movie sets and stuff and it's it is like its own little world isn't it? well, it's the world of make-believe I suppose and is it even though I'm sure you know you live a regular life and you're go and buy sandwiches or, or coffee some local sort of establishments is it do you think there is a bit of a distance now between yourself and and the, the Richard from that time no I don't I, I I mean it's you know it's 18 19 years of my life and the most in I mean it made me who I am um, I've changed I hopefully I've grown I've become a little more complicated a little more uh, um, uh, diverse in, in my thinking than when I was 18 years old or when I was, but it, it is, when I go back, uh, it's so easy for me to remember that time and those people um, that, you know, you know, me, I don't think about it all the time, but, but uh, I'm basically the same. I, I think we kind of all are, we, some hide it better than others. Um, you know, and, uh, but it was a very, I grew up in a very small world like Stanley, you know, my experience with, when I went to college, it was 120 miles from my hometown. It was, I, as I said, it's like going to Paris, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, this it's a big world out there, you know, um, and, and that just made me want to see more of it and, and go other places and do other things and meet other people uh, who, who aren't like me who are different than I am, who have something else to offer. So yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a process and a journey just like everybody's life, but you, I do not forget, nor it's not, it's not I would never try, but, but it's, it's just there in my memory all the time. Are you quite a nostalgic person, do you think? Do you find yourself very, looking back? Very, very. Yeah. I'm a softie and I'm, a, you know, it, it, it's, oh my God, I think about, you think about those, I think of specific days and um, um, uh, people. And I, I go back, I try to go back. I haven't been back in a while, but I try to go back to reunions in my high school um, when I can to see everyone. Uh, but yes, I'm very nostalgic. I'll, I'll hear a song and start crying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering because I was sort of thinking back to obviously this wonderful career you've had but did you have a, a backup career did you ever have a another hobby or another passion that you you contemplated when you left school well it's a good thing because I I, I drove a laundry truck for a while and had five accidents in in two months um, <clears throat> no there's nothing I could do I, th- I think that might be a good thing because I was forced to be an actor <laughs> I had no other options um, and they always said to me, uh, the, the counselor at school said, you need a backup plan. I said, I, I don't even understand that. What do you mean a back? If, if I'm not a, an actor, I what become a history teacher? What, what, is, what? I don't understand what I'm. So um, no, it's, it, it never occurred to me to do anything else. Um, uh, I don't know what I could do. I have no ability to do anything. <laughs> I mean, my father wanted to meet to be uh, a dentist like he is. And I said, you don't understand. Uh, that would mean I'd have to graduate from dental school. And uh, I, don't, I don't see that. In- <laughs> you know, no, so. not all about who you know. So that was a stepbrother's. 
um, but because there's the, I was wondering about the joys to um, uh, one of the joys to acting and doing the career you do is it that because unlike you look at Stanley in the movie he's there's an end date to what he does there is a retirement to his um, to his profession to his career but I guess in some ways in acting that doesn't exist and is that quite a, a, a freeing kind of thing I guess you, know, you look at like Harry Dean Stanton acting well into his 90s and it does feel like one of those professions where if the roles are still coming there's never any need to kind of hang up your boots no that's it you, you hang them up when they hang them up for you you know that's kind of what what happens and and you know it's but you change as you get older you know you're less ambitious you're less um driven to do things or find interesting projects or support your family you know things like that 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 are 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 essential and i find that the older i get that uh, the less i um I, the less I need to work. I love to work. I love working. I love work. I so like working with Shane. I love being around younger people. I, I like, because when I'm acting, I'm usually the oldest one in the movie. So it's nice. It's great to be around, um, you know, y younger energy. It just, it, it's, it's a tonic. And I, I, I love it. Because obviously I'm sure people constantly speak to you about a lot of your brilliant past projects. And when I sort of look through your, 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 your credits, of which there are so many wonderful films, the one that does still stand out, I'm such a big fan of Step Brothers. I, I honestly, uh, that film, I mean, it's very easy to say uh, is one of the greatest comedies ever made. But I just think as a movie, a standalone movie, forgetting genre limitations or whatever, you know, people put onto it. It's just a fantastic piece of cinema. But what I love so much about your performance is I don't ever feel like you played it as a comedy. Was that, was that the approach? Do you always kind of approach the, every role with the kind of truth of the character, never really considering the genre the movie sits in? Well, yeah, you, you, you know, I, I, it's, you try to be a person, not a character, you know, not just a, a you know, a, a trope. You try to be a human being and live your life on the screen. And that's what you do. And then you, you have these two guys in front of you and uh, you know, it's, 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 it was crazy. I mean, it was just so much fun to do that. Um, and and the, uh, Adam McKay has an incredible freedom as a director, and he gives you license and and, and responsibility, which actors, which I love, you know. And uh, you know, it's like he said to me during one of the takes in the uh, at the Catalina wine mixer. He said, "Go." To tell the two boys that you wanted to be a dinosaur when you were growing up. And I said, Adam, I don't even understand what, you, what you're talking about. He said, no, just go tell them that, that you, when you're early in your life, you always wanted to be a dinosaur. And uh, so I did, that was the thing we did. It. And I said, that's not going to be in the movie. He said, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, it was just joy, but I mean, the it, movie should be joy. It should be fun. Good Lord. There's lots of jobs you can hate. That shouldn't be one of them. Get a chance to make a movie? I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, um, have you heeded your own advice? Have you ever lost your dinosaur? Because obviously that's the advice he's giving, isn't it? To uh, so what about you? <laughs> uh, well, I, I know. I mean, I, I, this is what I've always wanted to do since I can remember. Um, so no, no, it's always been, it's been an incredible journey for me to look back on now that I'm 73, that I, I look and I say, Oh my God, look, look at the life I've led. Look at the people I've met. Look at the opportunity I, I've had, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's been amazing, you know, and, and not to be grateful for it, I would be foolish. So my, my final question was just coming up to my time, but just looking ahead to, to, to 2021, uh, have you got, because obviously last year felt like one of those years where there, every project was being paused or being pushed and it was hard to kind of get any flow, but how's your, how's this year looking for you? Have you got much kind of going on this year? Well, I, I'm, yes, I'm starting a mini series, um, uh, Ryan Murphy mini series uh, in, in, well, they keep moving it because of the COVID uh, in, in March, I think uh, about Je Jeffrey Dahmer. And, uh, and I have two movies. Uh, one I just finished, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley um, with Bradley Cooper, uh, which was really fun. Guillermo is a, is a trip. He's just amazing. And I did a movie actually before COVID that hasn't come out yet called The Humans, which is uh, based on the play, The Humans, which was a Tony Award play, winning play, then written and directed by the playwright. 
I uh, wrote and directed the 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 um, the movie, and um, that I loved that whole experience. That was amazing. So yeah, I have I have uh, st- stuff going on, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's music to my ears because I think your your choices and your roles and projects and performances are so brilliant. So the, keep them coming, please. <laughs> appreciate it. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much, Richard. Have a nice rest of the day and I'll hopefully catch up with you soon one day. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Yeah. Nice. Hey!